Hey guys, welcome to 20s and Trending. I'm Madison Brodsky, and today we have an amazing online genius as a guest. He graduated from the University of Arizona two years early and created a website that targets the millennials called Explica. The website publishes infographics and animations about controversial topics, ranging anywhere from sports and entertainment to politics. The site has had so much success, he is, na he is named in Arizona Republic's top 35 entrepreneurs under the age of 35. With me now is the founder of the website, Vip. So first of all, congratulations on all of your success and your graduation. Thank you, thank you. How does it feel to be graduated? Freedom. <laughs> That's Why's what it that? feels like, freedom. Why is that? I mean, I get to longboard to work every day down a bridge in Austin into downtown. That's a pretty awesome vibe. What's the difference between Tucson and... I feel like Tucson is the hipster town and Austin is the hipster city, so it's just scale, but really very similar culture. Okay. So you're only 19 years old, correct? Mm hmm So did you skip a grade or two? Did you like get college credit when you're in high school through AP classes? So I started I started college when I was 16 so I'd skipped a couple grades coming in but I also had mm -hmm. taken a pretty decent number of APs so the combination of that and like a decent course load during college and I really just accidentally graduated early but it happened. How did that happen? Tell me that story. My uh, my friend came up to me one day my freshman year and was like hey, do you know you can graduate like next year? And I was like, what do you mean? And he pulls up this spreadsheet, like this whole thing. I have no idea how he made it that fast. But he has this whole spreadsheet <laughs> and shows it to me. And I didn't believe him, but in the end, really, I could graduate the next year, and I did. That's so crazy. How did he just know all of your classes and know your expectations? I have no idea. Some, some, some people I know are just crazy. They are very smart. Like, <laughs> OK. Yeah. Well, speaking of smart, your original dream was science related, right? Right. OK, so what did you want to do in science? I really wanted to start a this this sort of facility that would, both had MDs and PhDs like working together, so personalized mm -hmm. medicine and, and stuff like that. So that was that was a vision uh, in the beginning, but I think that was even giving away that I was going to pretty soon transition into business and entrepreneurship. What else were you involved in while you were in college? I started a couple different websites and mobile apps. Um, I did a lot of consulting. I was did a lot of design consulting for big companies. And the whole time I was building up this company, really, back then it was called Draw Science. Okay, so what was the mission and the insight of this website when it was called Draw Science? So at the beginning, it was just a blog I made. Um, I was like a science fair nut when I was a kid. And mm -hmm. it was at one of these science fairs, there was a judge, his name's Winston Vuong, I'm still friends with this guy. Um, and he told me, he was like, you should look at science blogging and outreach. And I, I thought he was crazy, but then I started this website about two weeks later and just started putting up infographics about science news. And it was soon after that that things started taking off. I was starting to fly everywhere, go to conferences. Uh, we turned into a company, and then now that company is now Explica. So what was your major? Because you seem very interested in science, and then you created this website. Right. Um, so my major was biology. I, I majored in molecular and cellular biology. Uh, and that's what I did a lot through, through high school, too, as well. And it was part of this pre-med thing. Uh, I definitely think at some point maybe I'll go back into biology, but not anywhere in the next like 10 years. Why is that? I want to keep working on Explicit. I want to grow it into a much larger brand. I think it can be as, as big as some of the names that people recognize today. Right. So since you are so interested in biology and you created this website, how did you transform into almost a journalist by creating something like this? I think it was interesting because right as I started delving into entrepreneurship, I started messing around more in the content media marketing space. Uh, I was a design consultant. I, I worked for companies like Facebook and Tilt sometimes. And, and while I was doing that, on the flip side, I was learning the marketing side as I was a contributor at Huffington Post. Um, Draw Science became an affiliate with Business Insider. And so I kind of just got shoved into these industries, really. Opportunities and in the door Opportunities opens. opened, and I just yeah. had to learn quickly. What was your experience with Facebook? I think all very large companies are amazing in how they've managed to preserve innovation and, and keep things changing all the time. What was the best lesson that you learned? I think in the long run, the best lesson I've learned is that any challenge is possible to solve. And, and I think that is, that is the mindset that we take with anything we're trying to do with Explica, is that we can solve this. We just haven't thought about it the right way yet. So. 
Explica is targeting the millennials, but everyone wants to target the millennials. So why did you also agree to target the millennials? So for us, really, again, since everything's about testing, since it's based on a bunch of engineers and scientists like myself, mm -hmm. the team really is a bunch of engineers and scientists. We just test a lot of stuff. And so Explica was something we were testing while we were in the Seed Sumo Accelerator uh, right after college. And we, Explica was just one idea we were testing, and it started pulling in this disproportionate number of millennials. So, for instance, Mike was number one in 2014 for around like 50% of their audience was millennials. 82% of our audience is 18 to 34 years old, falls in that generation Y uh, bandwidth. So it's pretty interesting that we just ended up pulling these people in, but it was more like reaction to market than an idea ourselves. Okay, so would you ever look into having journalists come in and work with you as well, not just engineers, to write these stories or do broadcast online? Cause online broadcast is moving to the web. Definitely, no. I think that one of the more interesting parts that's happening now is we're starting to work with a lot of different players in industry. So we delve into the content marketing space a little. We've worked with Soylent and American Scientist just putting out really good content. Uh, we've started talking to ABC and we also started talking to Verizon in terms of this media space where we can collaborate with both people on the side of content delivery and people on the side of content creation. So there's a lot of collaboration that can go on in industry and it's just starting to show up because we just announced that fundraising round like two weeks ago, I think. So you talk a lot about the infographics mm -hmm. and that I'm assuming has to do a lot with how the majority of your staff is engineers, correct? Right. So what exactly are you guys doing? So what we're doing is building really two things. One, a visual news site, and two, an automatic news site. So the first part that we're building is just creating these very interesting graphics. We don't even really think that they fit the description of infographics anymore, but there's these interesting storytelling mechanisms that are animated, scrollable, and re mobile responsive. So totally built for the web, an entirely new medium. And so we're creating that, but on the flip side, we're trying to build sort of narrow AI some sort of artificial intelligence in an extent that can automatically take trending news stories and, and, and things like that and transform them into this new medium. So are you taking stories from other websites or are you creating them yourselves? In a sense, we are a news aggregator because what we do is we pull a lot of data in on trending news stories and then write our own. So the site has only been up for four months, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and it already has 6.5 million readers and 16,000 Facebook fans. How did you market it to gain that kind of traffic? I think, again, one of the funnest parts of being in a startup is that we have to learn new things very, very fast. So I'm coming straight out of college, and one of the first things I learned at the Seed Sumo Accelerator was cost per click marketing. And we became really good at targeted ads and, and targeted marketing. And because of that, we were able, able to rapidly grow our audience with a very, very low spend. Do you think Facebook is the most important social media right now? I think it's rapidly shifting away. Uh, Facebook, because of their lack of Gen Zers on board, uh, they do have them on Instagram. And same with Twitter. They don't really have very many Gen Zers on board, but they have them with Periscope. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how new social, new social media is showing up. And if you really look at it, Explic is part of this wave of more visual content. You have live stream video with Periscope. You have Snapchat Discover channels, which are this entirely new format of prevent, uh, presenting the news. And now you have Explic. It's part of this new wave of media. Right, and you're going more into Snapchat. I saw that on your website you talk a lot about Snapchat and mm -hmm. how I think it says um, 63 or 36 million millennials get their news from Snapchat. Right. Where do you come up with that kind of research? Uh, I think that statistic is from a study in one of, one of the like famous tech magazines. We, we usually cite them in, in the decks that we put out. Um, but we had to do a lot of market research when we were setting up this idea because at our core, we're just experimenting to understand consumers and build amazing products for them. Right. So what's next for you guys? I think the next thing for us really is to A, finish building out this narrow AI and, and do a lot of development. But B, we need to build into this household brand that we have the ability to. We're growing at four times the pace that BuzzFeed was. We've got all this traction underneath our belt, those statistics on the users. We have a disproportionate number of millennials, so we're putting out the kind of content that they want. There's a lot of things leading up for us to do really well in the next like couple quarters for sure. Yeah. 
I can completely see that. You guys developed this website that kind of brings in all the social media sites in a way, but in an informative way to keep millennials informed mm -hmm. about everything. So are you guys looking at anything specific to keep expanding? I think we are trying to see other ways in which we can collaborate, like you were saying earlier, with other industries. Because we have this sort of core discovery that our visual content works, and, and more broadly, any visual content works. And all we want to do is figure out different ways we can use that to help consumers and businesses do better. What kind of industries do you want to break into? One of the things we've spent a lot of time on, actually, is helping out companies with presenting their ideas to employees, to investors, to potential other corporations and clients. And even in the last six months, we've closed around five million in deals, investments, contracts, just off of pitch decks we've made. And so there's this entire other place we can go into helping people present their ideas, more on the content marketing side. That's amazing. You are literally the example that I think everyone could take a lesson for about learning something, taking it, and creating something of your own, creating an opportunity for yourself. Thank you. Of course. Well, thank you so much for coming in today and speaking with us in the studio. Thank you for having me. Of it was a course. pleasure. This is Vip, and my name is Madison Brodsky, your host of 20 Sun Trending on 5 on 20, and I cannot wait to have you guys back here next Tuesday to gossip some more. I'll see you soon.